We're now going to take our first guest for today, uh, Honorable Obina Chidoka. This one? Yes. Well, the Senate recently reminded Nigerians of the need to revisit the amendments of the 1999 Constitution, effectively picking up from where the last National Assembly left it off. Uh, in trying to rationalize their position on the matter, the senators pointed out perceived inherent flaws in the Constitution as the reason for wanting to embark on an amendment. That uh, position has but does, uh, put those who believe that the Constitution uh, self-generating organic documents have been attacking that position, calling it a smokescreen for filtering away funds that should ideally be used to provide much-needed infrastructure and essential public services. Now, who is right and who is not? Joining us from our Rise of Ujo studio to look at this matter in greater detail is Honorable Obi Nachidoka, member of the People's Democratic Party, representing Indemili North and South Federal Constituency in Anambra State in the House of Representatives. In addition, we will try to have his take on the decision of the United States Department of State to impose a series of sanctions on Nigerian politicians who have been found complicit for undermining the democratic process. Welcome to the program, Honorable Chidoka. Well, let's begin with the amendment to the Constitution. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Great. Thank you for coming. Uh, it's generated a lot of controversies. I mean, okay. a lot of people feel this is just a waste of the national resources because this is about the fourth or fifth amendment to the Constitution, and it has not yet met the desires of Nigerians. Uh, do you agree with those who say this is a waste of resources, a waste of time? Um, thank you, everyone. Um in Lagos. Um, going forward, I, I think there is a conversation we all need to have. Um, talking about the 1999 Constitution, I've read a lot of people who talk about the Constitution and how the Constitution was a decree 24 of the military junta and how it was never a constitution of the people. And so, um, without going into the nitty-gritty of what needs to be amended or alterated in the Constitution, um, if you take a look around, you will see that a lot of people are going, we're having a lot of conversations all over Nigeria about what Nigeria should look like, what the nation state should look like, and how we should move forward as a people. So I, I think that the most important thing shouldn't be um, the the monies people are talking about or the waste of resources of funding, but ideally about taking the opinions of people, the agitations of everyone, taking them into consideration and putting it in a document that will be workable, a document that will be acceptable by all Nigerians. And I mean, to a large extent, we, what, what we can do is to look at the areas where we have a lot of disagreements in Nigeria, where there are contentious issues. If you remember, in the last assembly, we tried also amend the constitution, and out of the 32 proposals that was made, about uh, there were disagreements in nine. And so what we do is we take a look at the areas where we can agree, and then of course go ahead and do that, and so that we can have a bit of a balance between the you know the the different voices and the the different takes of people all over Nigeria. So I think, to me, that is the most important thing. You hear people talking about Nigeria being the most divided as it is today, based on uh, ethnic or uh, religious lines, or whatever you might look at it. So in such case, if every component part of Nigeria now knows that we can actually have a conversation that can lead to a document that will be acceptable to everybody in Nigeria, then I, I think it's something that we should, we should be able to look at. Well, Honorable Chidoka, the main bone of contention, apart from concerns about cost, is that the strategy being adopted by the uh, National mm -hmm. Assembly would only provide opportunity for those who have been described as memoranda merchants. And last Thursday, uh, the Senate has already uh, mm -hmm. invited proposals and memoranda uh, on a number of issues already identified and those submissions could also be made by email. Uh, but some people are saying, look, rather than focus on the memoranda, 
How about having a conference of the people, of the ethnic nationalities, where some of those issues that we are all very familiar with could be tabled, and then we can have a people's constitution that is a product of a debate rather than piecemeal amendment. What's your reaction to that? Um, my simple take is the National Assembly is there as a lawmaking organ of, uh, as enshrined also in the same 1999 constitution. Um, that might not stop us from going ahead to do what we are mandated to do if it's within our purview to amend the 1999 constitution. Um, I, I'm hearing the word for the first time, memoranda uh, uh, merchant, uh, because that's the way it should go. Everybody should be given an opportunity to come and air their views. Now, if it is within Nigerians to decide that going ahead with the amendment is not what is required, that they want to go, you know, making us talk and having a, um, a conference, that is another kettle of fish. But in terms of lawmaking, in terms of amendment of, of, of the 1999 constitution, what we should do in National Assembly is to hear everybody's opinion. Because I, I, in this country, I've seen a situation where people will come out and say, oh, we don't know this law was passed. We don't know when it was um, signed. Look at the Kama Act, for example, that was penned by the president, assented to by the president. Now, in the lawmaking process, the bill goes on first reading. Second reading is referred to the appropriate committees, and then everybody should bring their memorandum. So everybody should come in, and let's have this discussion. I'm looking at it from another angle. I'm looking at it from not, not only as a legislator, but an angle that can make us have a sustainable working document, that which will allow Nigerians to air their views. So if, uh, and also, it, it gives you opportunity, even if you do it by email, I want to see a station also in National Assembly, and I know that will happen also uh, because of COVID-19, have limited amount of people who will come into the committee rooms, sit down, and air their views. And I think, to me, that is another way to go. But don't you think Nigerians are bored with this process? You know, so that's why somebody like uh, former President Lucia Gwanda came out, you know, to, to discard the process, because in the end, it doesn't get the desired result. People's voices are not heard. You know, even when you take it up to public hearings, when the people get to come into these uh, uh, places, you know, like uh, committee rooms and things like that, you don't get to hear anything that comes out of it. So don't you think people are tired of this process and they want it to be more inclusive? You know, how can we bring about that? You talked about karma. Uh, I bet you most people didn't even follow through the processes. They might have sent it out to people and say, okay, yeah, check, you know, send the memorandum. But they didn't get it. I, I bet you you've not gotten a lot of memoranda now because most people didn't even get, you know, the, 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 the information as regards time to present memoranda. Um, thank you very much for that. Um... I mean, the much I know about National Assembly and when people say their voices are not heard, I, I, I just want to possibly disagree with that. Um, it, 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 the, the, the engagement is there when wow. you talk about how the laws should be passed. The engagements are there. What you need to do is, and what we normally will do, uh, in the last task I used to chair um, Committee on Environment, and these things have to be advertised. Let people from all nationalities, let all Nigerians, let's have this conversation, whether it is through the National Assembly or having a national conference. But I can tell you for sure, there have been laws that were amended. I remember when we were trying to amend the National Oil Speed Detection and Response Agency Act. Of course, you're going to bring in all, everybody into the room. And at the end of the day, you can even have a, a, a technical section where people will come and air their views. The, the normal practice is that the advertisements are given out, um, we should vote more money um, or more, a, little more, a little more resources in making the announcements and the advertisement to all nooks and crannies of Nigeria and even abroad. And people can even send in their, uh, uh, um, their views. And when we look at that um, with the sincerity of purpose and with the right kind of leadership, so it boils down to the same thing we're saying. There are so many laws, there are so many processes, there are so many things we've put in place. But it's as if that 
after all the hard work. I, I know how much you have to work. I mean, if you put in the work in National Assembly, it's a lot of work. Nigerians look at National Assembly as a place where people sit down and collect money and, and just don't do anything. I know the amount of work we have to put in this. I know the back and forth we have to go. I know what it takes to amend an act. The process it has to go. First reading, second reading, um, committee work, uh, uh, public hearing, um, looking at hundreds and thousands of documents and then bringing it back to third reading, clause by clause, and then, of course, sending it to the, to, the, to, to, to the executive who might have one or two issues, bring it back, and before we go further to do all this. So this is an opportunity for everyone. I mean, I don't see anything wrong in it. Many other constitutions, the world over, have been either altered or amended severally, severally, some 20 times, some 27 times, just like in the American case. We need to have this conversation. There are so many agitations there. If it's something that will make Nigerians to talk, to talk to one another, to say, this is my view about this and that, what we can do is to aggregate everything and then say, this is the views where we agree on. We'll put it on one side. And the ones we don't agree on, maybe we can now go further and have those conversations outside, even outside the National Assembly. But there must be views we can agree on. And those views, we can take them as Nigerians and amend that section of the Constitution. In the last house, there, there is isn't some towns in, in Nigeria who are wrongly spelled in the constitution. Go and check it out. And because we couldn't Chiraka. amend it, we couldn't even just alter just amendments. Okay. So would you agree yes. to those who say the political interests and personal interests of members of the National Assembly may be uh, responsible for, you know, the lack of acceptability the people have with this amendment. For instance, they say uh, the National Assembly will not be open to some of these changes, changes that Nigerians desire. For instance, a bicamera legisla legislation doesn't pay us, but would you be open to that? Would you be open to reform that? Definitely. I mean, I, I, it is, now we are talking about concern of the people by the people and for the people. If, if Nigerians decide that we don't want a bicameral legislation, so be it. So be it. All we need to do is to go back and alter and, and reconfigure our federal constituencies to make sure that we we'll have a legislature that is for the people. What we are talking about is an amendment that is you know, fit for the people, very fit for the people. So we, have to, we need to have these conversations. I keep using that word because every day when I talk to people all over Nigeria, when I read in the papers, when I, watch, when I watch you on the news every morning, every day, you hear agitations all over Nigeria. And if this is a process that can amend or alter, which will help to reshape our collective you know, um, drive within Nigeria, then so be it. And I think that's what we need to do. Well, we need to listen to one another and bring about laws. And I keep saying, I keep saying, I keep saying, after doing that, the most important thing is that the leadership is also very important. An efficient and effective leadership that will drive Nigeria, the nation state, to a place where every voice will be heard. You'll be surprised that even what we have, the laws we have today in Nigeria, if well implemented, will mean a lot to the Nigerian people, where we, are, we show sincerity of purpose. Not everybody in National Assembly is after the money. Not everybody is after self-interest. We are all Nigerians, and what we want to do is to see what will benefit my constituents, myself, my children, and those unborn, to be sure that we have a country we can call our own. When we travel abroad, you have to come back to Nigeria. This is where our country is. And if we want one indivisible country, then we should show sincerity of purpose in amending a constitution that will bring about the voices, the yearnings, the cries, the agitations of everyone to bring about a document that will be acceptable. That is the point I'm looking at it from. Well, finally, Honorable Chidoka, just before we go, and as quickly as you can uh, attempt it, what's your take on the uh, uh, restrictions, the uh, memo by the United States and the UK with regard to electoral offenders in Nigeria and the threat to impose sanctions on them uh, like visa restrictions, even uh, trial under international law and also uh, seizure of assets. Quickly. I I'm very surprised that Nigeria have to wait for the international community to do that. 
we have other organs of government, other organs or agencies in Nigeria who should begin also to talk about that. I'm a victim of election violence, and I know what it can do, and I know the, the, the havoc it can create. In Nigeria today, the, the, the different agencies, from the NBA to other organs of government, can begin to even bring about sanctions. We don't have to wait for them to do that. In the last elections, I have to write a letter to the EU, to United Nations, to, to, to um, foreign agencies, to say, this is what is going on, and these are the people involved. Why don't you do an investigation to find out? Those restrictions should be there. It should teach as a deterrent for people who want to cause havoc, or who want to uh, uh, rig elections, or who want to bring about violence. It's not acceptable. In my election, a young man woke up one morning and said, let me go and vote. He never came back. He was killed. He was shot in the head. Two people killed. And I think that those people who are involved should be held accountable. All over Nigeria, we should have a election riggers and uh, uh, violent people register, where we can publish it, and the other countries will take suit. And so I don't think that we should wait for the European Union to do that. The non-governmental organizations, the other organizations in Nigeria, the Christian, in fact, go local. If you're found to have committed any crime, even chieftaincy title, you shouldn't get in your village. You should go to that extent to deter people from causing havoc during the election. It is one man, one vote. And this is the 21st century for crying out loud. We have, important, we have educated people in this country, and they take us for granted going about causing havoc, killing people, rigging elections, and bringing the most incompetent people to power through the back door. It shouldn't happen. It shouldn't happen. This shouldn't be happening in a country like Nigeria. And these are some of the things we need to amend and look at and make sure that when these issues come up, it becomes a serious, a serious matter penned in our laws to be sure that we are not only sanctioned in Nigeria, then worldwide. I remember the last time I was at The Hague, and they told me, oh, um, the former Liberian president was at the prison in Hague. I drove to the prison and stayed in front of the prison, and I was watching. Of course, I couldn't get in. I wish I could go in to see him and say, I don't think you know you will ever end up here. Some of, some of the leaders in Nigeria should end up in The Hague. Well, on that so note... that's what we should do. <laughs> we should put it in such a way that people... Uh, 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 a sanction for these kind of actions. Well, on that note, we'd like to thank you very much, Honorable Obenachidoka. Thank you for joining us this morning on The Morning Show.